Um, we're going to stay in, I told you last week, we started a new sermon series called um, uh, Standing Firm. And so we're going to just keep going with that. But today I'll be honest and say it's going to seem a little discombobulated to compare to how I normally speak. The reason being is usually I take a chunk of scripture, and today I have, take, I have, in my mind, taken a book of scripture, and I want to give you the updates of this book in the next three hours. So bear with me. Uh, if you get hungry, um, yeah, good luck. You can order some pizza. That'd be kind of cool. Like, have the pizzas here. Like, so um, I will take a break for pizza. Today I want to take a look at somebody that you've all heard of. He was a prophet. He was a prophet of four different kings in the Bible. He, he, could, he could interpret dreams, uh, and that's what he was pretty well known for. And the kings that he was under were King Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, which was Nebuchadnezzar's son, and then after both of them went crazy and passed, then uh, Cyp uh, Darius and then Cyprus. Um, we're going to cover the first two kings because those were the kings that were really challenging. Now, I want you to set the stage here. So Nebuchadnezzar had sent out his army and they had just taken over much of Judah. And so as he's, he told the guards, if you find someone that's young, strong, and can serve me, bring them back to me. So that's kind of where we start the story. This is Daniel chapter 1. Is Daniel and them had been brought back and his friends, and we're going to get to his friends here in a minute. I'm sure you know these names. Um, Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, or I'm sorry, verse 6, it says, Now among them were the sons of Judah named Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Then the commander of the officials assigned new names to them. So this is where we get the names that we always hear in the story. So understand that they had real names, Jewish names, but they were given uh, Babylonian names. We have Belshazzar, which was Daniel. And then who can tell me, don't look, you're all looking, who can tell me the other three? Shadrach and Benny, right? Come on, we've all watched Veggie Tales before, haven't we? I love Veggie Tales. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's choice food and with the wine that he drank. So he sought permission from the governor of the officials that he might not defile himself. Now God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. Set the stage here. They get brought back to Babylon. They're in captivity. They were then chosen because they were, excuse me, they were children that could serve. The king said, all those that can serve me in the palace will be given my food. So think about it. If you were not chosen, you would be going to McDonald's down the road. I'm, I'm not sure. You'd be foraging for your own food. You may not even eat. But those that were chosen would at least be brought into the kingdom or the castle and would eat the, cho the king's chosen food. Now, I, 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 I kind of likened it this morning to this. Back then, the Israelite Jewish people could not eat what meat? Pork. I don't know about you, bacon is a food group of itself. My idea of the ideal salad is three pounds of bacon and a lettuce leaf on top. I love bacon. I do. It's one of my absolute favorites. So I want you to picture this, that you just got brought into the castle. Your, your area has been taken over. And now you've been chosen to serve the king, which is far better than not being chosen to serve the king. And you walk in, and this table is full of bacon. I got to put it in simple terms for me. I'm just thinking, I walk in, and I see a table full of bacon. Bonus, right? But remember that Daniel was under the law. And they were not allowed to eat bacon. Daniel didn't want to take the chance of anything that was of defilement to cross his lips. 
He was afraid that, okay, we all know what strips of bacon are, right? Some of you guys kind of like it slimy and soft. Some of you like it really hard and crunchy. I'm kind of in the middle. I'll take a little bit of a pull, but I like the crunch. But he didn't want them to bring something because the other thing I love is pulled pork. I love pulled pork, man. Denise makes a slop sauce like a barbecue sauce. Oh, my goodness. It's good. But the problem is, is if pulled pork is sitting next to pulled beef, I'm oblivious. I wouldn't know the difference. And Daniel said, I will not take a chance to defile myself not knowing what the king is going to give me. Now, understand, the king was being very generous to say that he would share his choice foods with them. But Daniel said, I'm not going to take the chance. So it kind of comes down to this today. The, the sermon is stand firm. How many times a day or in a week or in a year do you have a plate of pork in front of you? Of the, the, light, the leanest cut smoked bacon you can envision. And you have your choice of following God or following the bacon. In other words, how many of you truly stand upon your beliefs of God or get swayed by the world? And that's, if we think about it, Babylon in the rest of the Bible is considered of the evil empire. And we see in Revelation that Rome was likened to Babylon. Babylon will fall. Evil will fall. Daniel, as a young man, said, I will not even take the chance of allowing myself to, to let something come before God. Think that about that in today's terms. How often do we allow something to come in the way of God? And you go, oh, I don't. I bet you you do. I bet you every one of you here do that you, you struggle with that every day. I, I know I do. I, I know sometimes I can sit down and I'm like, I'm just going to take a break. I'm studying. My mind, I just need to process. And for me, I'll be honest, I love reels on Facebook. A lot of times, like there was one that not too long ago and I tried to find it because I was going to play it. It's this little bitty boy. And I'm guessing he's, he's able to eat food. That's about how big he is. Big old cheeks, cutest little guy. And mom and dad are videoing him, so it was going to work out really well. I wish I could find it. But it was him eating his first piece of bacon. And he has his eyes closed. And he's like, mmm. Oh, mmm. Mm. And he's just enjoying the bacon. And I love watching those. They're just cute to me. But you know what happens is no matter how many reels you watch, because you can just flip up and go to the next reel. And a lot of times they have some good ones for woodworking. I love to woodwork. I love those kind of reels. It kind of helps me get my mind off things. But then they always seem to throw in the one of some girl in very little clothes. And you can't swipe up fast enough. The problem is, is when you go to swipe up, you've touched the screen. And now their AI technology says, oh, that must mean what he wants to see more of. And I bet you it happens to every one of us. This is just an example, but how many of us sit before a TV every night and we're okay with everything on the TV? Well, you know, I don't like that part of it because it's something I don't believe in, but, but the rest of it, I... See, Satan is cunning. Satan is cunning and will do whatever he takes. Daniel knew that he would not even take the chance of them walking in. So what does he tell them? Bring us fruits and vegetables. I can eat all fruits and vegetables. God says that's okay. But I don't want to take a chance on you bringing in a big old plate of meat and me not knowing if that's beef brisket or if that's pork. I will not take the chance. And he stood firm. Now, the guard's like, whoa, time out, dude. I'm afraid of the king. You're going to get me in trouble because they, you know, in their theology, philosophy, is that if you're not eating the meat, you're going to get weak and wimpy and not be able to do anything. So Daniel says, test me. Just bring me this for a while, 
and, and, and so the guard says, I'll give you 10 days. Because at the end of the 10 days was going to be the, the process that the king was going to truly walk in and pick who he wanted. After 10 days, Daniel and his three friends were stronger and mightier than they had started with and more so than everyone else that had eaten all the other food. It comes down to this. God will protect you. If you stand for God, God will protect you and bless you. You, you know, I, I, thinking of the Daniel story, we always think about the things we're going to come to, but we never think about this story, that he was willing to stand firm, even to the point of death, just to not put himself in a position to stumble, to not put himself in a position to fall before his God. How many of us do that every day? Do, do, we, do we eat the bacon or do we eat the carrot? Because I think many times, at least for me, that bacon smells a lot better than the carrot. And I struggle. We struggle with that, right? First Daniel, we're jumping down to verse 19. I told you we're going to kind of be jumping, hitting the highlights here. Please, your homework is to read the book of Daniel. It is a great book. You'll get a lot more out of it. And I'm just trying to hit the highlights because I know you don't want to be here till three. <clears throat> the king talked with them and, and out of them, not one of them was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's personal service. As for every matter of wisdom and understanding about, all, uh, about which the king consulted them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians, conjurers who were in this realm. Now, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, a, a, King Nebi had dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. The king gave orders and called all the magicians and the conjurers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to, the, to tell the king... Uh, his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king. The king says, I had a dream and my soul is anxious to understand the dream. Now I want you to picture this. I don't know about you guys, I used to love magicians. I think it's fascinating how they could uh, do things, make cards disappear, saw women in half and do all these crazy things. And then if you remember, I don't remember what it was, maybe five, ten years ago, there was the unknown mag magician that came out. And he showed on TV how they did it all. He was ostracized from the magician's union, I guess, I don't know, but uh, he was hated by all magicians. After seeing that, I kind of thought, I I'm not really big into magicians anymore. Because honestly, it's not like they're actually making the thing disappear they're just deceiving me to make my mind think things are disappearing. Sort of like they did to King Nebi. See, these magicians and conjurers, they weren't necessarily doing anything. They were deceiving the king to make them look like they knew something the king did not. So when he brings them in and says, okay, you guys are my go-to. Here's my dream. I got this dream. It's, it's a... It's a golden head and it's it's bronze and it's iron and it's wood and okay go what does it mean and their first thought was no problem king we got this and all the chaldeans and all the man the conjurers and magicians they got together and they huddled around going he's lost his bloody mind a golden head a bronze this iron wood what he's nuts well, you go tell the king we don't know. I'm not telling the king. You go tell the king. So finally they went before the king and said, dude, we have no idea. We have no idea what this dream means. Um, maybe you're losing your mind. Maybe you're gone off the deep end. But yeah, sorry, we're going to go eat some more of your food. Well, the king gets mad. He's, he put all his trust in those people. And so what does he de decide to do now? Kill all the wise men, because in his opinion, they're not very wise. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't understand. So that's where we're going to pick up. Daniel chapter 2, it says, Moreover, the thing which the king demands is difficult, and there is no one else who would declare to the king except gods, whose dwelling place is not with, mor is not with mortal flesh. 
uh, this, I'm sorry, verse 11 and 12. Because the king became indignant and very furious and gave orders to destroy all the wise men of Babylon, so the decree went forth and that the wise men should be slain, they looked for Daniel and his friends to kill them. So now you're Daniel. Or you could be Shadrach, you could be Meshach or Abednego, I don't care. You get taken over. You get brought in as a slave. You get found favor in the king. And yet now, I'm going to kill you. So you have your choice. Lay down and die. Or believe. Daniel said, I want to talk to the king. Let me into the king. Now, I want you to understand that Daniel's a slave. He's a young man. He's willing to go to the king of Babylon and say, I can help you. Not, not me, but my God can help you. Verse 16, so Daniel went in and requested of the king that he would give him time in order that he might declare the interpretation to the king. Then Daniel went to the house and informed his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah about the matter so that they may request compassion from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his friends would not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So he goes, to the, he goes to the guard and says, you got to get me into the king. People are going to die, including me, which I'm not in favor of, but people are going to die. Let me into the king. So the guard says, okay, taking your life in your own hands. I'm going to let you go. The king said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, are you able to make known to me in these dreams which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered before, before the king and said, As for the mystery about which the king has inquired, neither wise men, conjurers, magi magicians, or diviners are able to declare it. However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. Then king Nebi fell on his face and did homage to Daniel, and gave orders to present him an offering and fragrant incense. The king answered Daniel and said, Surely your God is a God of gods, and the Lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries, since you have been able to reveal this mystery. You want to talk about standing firm? Not only do you not eat the king's food, which is a huge insult, but now you're willing to go before the king and say, I can interpret your craziness, dude? See, he can only do that one way. And that was with the strength of his God. It was only being firm in his faith, knowing his God will protect him and guide him and watch over him no matter what. There's nowhere in the scripture, and I've read it several times, that it said, well, Daniel was afraid. It never says that. He just said that he didn't want his friends to die, so he would go before the king for, for his friends and himself and all the wise men. See, he didn't, he didn't cower and go, oh, this is scary. He said, regardless of what happens, I will proclaim the good news of my God, and my God will help me and help me stand firm. He already helped me by not eating the meat. He's going to help me now. And he went before the king and he was able to tell him all that would happen. See, when we trust in God, when we stand firm in God, we don't have to worry about the outcome. That's not our job. Our job is to trust in him wherever he puts us. Trust me, I bet you if you were to ask Daniel now, like, hey, did you want to go to Babylon? He'd go, uh, no. God brought me there. I kind of got a little feeling, and I love you all. God brought me here. This was not in my plan in a bazillion years was to come here and to be with you. And now, I'm not saying I'm a slave. And I will eat your bacon. <laughs> but sometimes God leads us, whether we anticipate it, want it, or not, for his glory. 
So in that, when you go to work, I'm sure none of you wake up in the morning going, yay, I get to go to work again today. But he will use you for his glory when you stand firm. You just have to stand firm. And you may say, well, how do I stand firm in a world that's gone crazy when I'm being bombarded by this, that, and the other? I can't turn on the TV. I can't look at my computer. I can't do anything without being bombarded by evil. That has been going on since Adam and Eve uh, ate the fruit of the tree. Evil has come into the world. And it's always going to be here until the day Christ comes back and raptures the church, takes us home, new heaven, new earth. It's going to be like this. You are going to have challenges and tests. You're going to have struggles every day. My question to you today is, will you stand firm? See, Daniel didn't have, he, as a young boy, he would have learned the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, but he would not have known the Bible as we know it. He would not know of Jesus. He would not know of this, this spirit that would come to live inside of us. Jesus said that when I leave, I will leave the mighty counselor to live in you. We've got it better than Daniel did. We now give our life to Christ and we have God himself through his spirit living in us. And yet Daniel, I think, many times, I look at his story and I go, that dude had more faith, more stamina, more courage than I've ever had. And I have God in me. See, today, I'm, I, my challenge for you, my, my question for you is, standing firm is great, but what are you doing with it? Daniel stood firm, but he was really ready to use God. He was really t ready to trust God no matter what. See, what happened after Daniel did this? The king of Babylon said, your God is the God of gods and the king of lords. Someone who did not know the name Yahweh pronounced him as the true king, as the true God. But as we know, all, thing, all good things come to an end. We don't know the time frame here. We know that a little bit later on that uh, King Nebi was going to get arrogant again. You know, he was a king. And he was going to build a big statue. Just before the statue was made, and all this happened, Daniel goes before the king and says, I got this, these three friends. Can you kind of help them out? They need a job. And he says, no problem. I'm gonna, since you guys are so good and your God is so good, I'm going to put you in charge of ruling, helping rule parts of Babylon. Perfect. That's awesome. Chaldeans now were the guys that said, sorry, king, we have no idea what your uh, dream meant. We're watching them. Watching their every move. Oh, does that sound like anything that you ever struggle with today? Being a Christian and those non-Christians watching your every move? Just waiting for you to stumble? Well, the king builds this big statue, of course, as kings do, because he wanted everybody to worship him. And he said that any time you hear the lyre or the harp or the, the uh, and I say this for art's sake, the electric guitar, you're going to bow down and you're going to worship the statue. Well, guess what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did not do? Every time the lyre... Uh, happened or the piano happened or the harp happened, everybody would bow down and pay homage to the golden statue of King Nebi. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego said, no, no. Sorry, king. You, you are the king of this earth, but we will not bow down to you. Well, the Chaldeans saw that and what did they do? They went to the king and said, hey, you made this decree, dude. What are you going to do now? Because they wanted him out of the picture because... They couldn't do anything with these, these godly people being here. King Nebi brings them in and says, listen, I'm going to give you one last chance. We're going to play the harp. When the harp happens, you're going to bow down. You're going to worship my statue. And they stood there and they stood firm. And what happened? King says, I'm so mad I can spit nails. Guess what? Take that furnace over there, fire it up seven times. I want that fire so hot it burns them before they even get in. That's actually what happened. As the guards are bringing them in, the guards are like, pff, pff, pff. the guards are burning up. Here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They go strolling in. They're standing in the fiery furnace. 
king looks down. He's like, whoa, 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 time out. I put three in there. Why do I see four? And they're having a tea party. Well, they probably weren't having a tea party because the tea would evaporate by the time they got it to their lips. But they're just standing there. They're worshiping God. They're praising God. Four of them. Jesus was there with them. Fiery furnace, seven times hotter than normal. And they're just standing there praising God. They stood firm and God was with them. Daniel said, no, we're not going to eat your meat. God was with them. Daniel said, take me to the king. He ain't going to kill us all because my God knows. God was with him. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. God was with them. Do you see the pattern I'm getting here? When you stand firm, God will be with you. But the thing I want you to notice about them is it wasn't so much about the golden statue. It was about their unwillingness to bow down to the evil. See, that's standing firm. We can stand, say we stand firm all day long, but if we cower or we cave under the pressure of the world, then we're not very firm at all. We need to stand against the world. That doesn't mean we hate the world. That means that we stand firm in Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm against evil it wasn't the king personally it's what he wanted them to do and they would they refused to bow down before anyone that would put something before their god remember thou shall never thou shalt not worship idols anything that becomes before god doesn't have to be a golden statue anything that comes before god is an idol if that is the object of your affection, if that is the object of, of all that you are, if that is the object of your desire, then it has become your idol. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remained firm and left their God where he needed to be. And that was number one. They would bow down to nothing else. They caved to nothing else. Now, we know there's, there's a lot more stories that go on. In fact, the, the next thing after the fiery furnace was what? Then, then, da, then um, uh, King Nebi uh, acknowledges God again. He says, you, you're, bring them out. They're unhinged. He's expecting to smell at least some burned, singed hair. Nothing. He acknowledges God again. Now, the problem is, is, is the king is starting to truly lose his mind. In fact, uh, he brings Daniel in to, to interpret another dream. And it, it comes to pass that King Nebuchadnezzar walks out of the castle and begins eating grass. He, he begins to act like the animals of the field. He, in essence lost his mind. So that's where we bring in king number two, Bel Belshazzar, um, and, and it's Nebi's son. And he kind of starts out okay, but he gets the, the, the syndrome, you know, I'm the king. And now we see the same thing, that Belshazzar doesn't like what Daniel says. So he says, I'm going to put you and pet my little cats. We're going to send you to the lion's den because you will not bow down before me. Daniel says, I'm not. I'm, I'm not doing it. Dude, do whatever you got to do, dude. I'm not doing it. Sure enough, there they escort Daniel, the Chaldeans talking against Daniel that he won't bow down, he won't do what the king has required. And I truly believe that the king was a little deceived in this. I'll be honest. I'll let you read the story and make up your own mind. Nonetheless, Daniel ends up in the lion's den. Now, the king's like, uh, well, well, whatever. Sorry, stinks to be you, but I'm going to bed. Fully waking, well, anticipating waking up in the morning and finding Daniel's bones at best in the lion's den. But what happens? He wakes up, he goes to the lion's den, and, and I'm just picturing Daniel like laying back kind of against a rock like the lion's on his lap. He's kind of petting him like, you got such nice animals here. Jeez, thanks, king. These, I love these. Can I take them home? They're so cuddly. And the king's got to be going, are you kidding me? 
These are ferocious animals. We haven't fed them in a week and a half. They are so hungry. And it was Daniel who gave glory to God. God was with him. So what happens? All those people, all those Chaldeans that, that, that called out Daniel and tried to get Daniel killed, then got sent into the lion's den. And instantly they were mauled. See, see this whole story of, of, of Danny Boy and Shad and, and, and me, uh, what is it? Shadrach and Benny, that's it. Shadrach and Benny and King Nebi. See, we can kind of joke around about it, but this was a real story that really happened to three young men, that, or four young men, that stood firm on their faith in God. Today, my question is, is when you walk out of this building and, and there's a pile of bacon, if you will, or, or, or a pretty little cat, will you follow them? Will you fall to the pressures of this world? Or will you stand firm in your faith? Will you stand firm in God, in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Trinity? Will you stand firm in them? Or are you going to walk out of these doors and pretend you didn't hear anything today? You didn't hear any stories, even though these stories I bet you you've heard for a bazillion times since you were a little kid. See, that's the choice we have to make. We can say, I'm a, I'm a solid Christian. I'm firm. I'm rock solid. But unfortunately, then the pile of bacon gets put in front of you or the nice little cat gets put in front of you and we cower and we cave and we fall. Today, I encourage you, be Daniel. Stand before the king knowing that your king, God, is greater than any king on this earth. Be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and don't cower before something of this earth. Don't fall down on your knees to worship anything that's got pretty bling in color because it is all meant to deceive you. Satan will use whatever he can to deceive you to pull your eyes off of the true king. Today I encourage you, you may be feeling like you're in a fire, fiery den. You may feel like you're in a lion's den. Call on the name of Jesus. Worship Jesus, no one else. Understand that when you call on the name of Jesus, you called the armies of heaven to protect you. Jesus said, if you love me, I will always be with you. In fact, he said, if you love me, you will be filled with my spirit. You are the walking emblems of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit right now. So what are you going to choose? Carrots or bacon? Father, we thank you for this challenge. We thank you for this, this story of, of these, this, this prophet and his friends uh, uh, about how they would, would do nothing else other than stand firm. No matter the pressure that was put on them, no matter what, the, what they were told was going to happen, they remained firm. They looked to you, Father. They, they cried out to you. They sought your counsel. And they knew that when they called on the name of Jesus, on the name of God, that, he, that they would be filled and they would be protected. Regardless of the outcome, they would not cower to sin. They would not cower to evil. Because they knew that all the world was watching them. And they knew the king was watching them. And even in those days, the king of Babylon would decree Yahweh, the true King of Kings. Father, our example means so much. And, and in those times that we are in a fiery furnace and the world is beaten down on us and we don't know what to do, Father, help us to cry out for we know that you are standing there with us. You are at wrapping your arms around us. You are loving us. And although evil will continue to happen, our God is greater. 
and we praise you for that. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your glory. Forgive us in our frailty. Challenge us and strengthen us. Give us courage. We ask this all in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.